Hello everyone. Before I get started with Wednesday's lecture, I just want to spend a minute talking about cheating. Cheating is not cool and will not be tolerated in CS220 course. I'm sure by now all of you are familiar with the fact that Mike and I are willing to be very flexible in terms of providing student accommodations for this course. Once you've crossed the line, we really cannot help you. The penalty for cheating will be pretty high. All of the students involved will receive a zero score for that particular project and we will also have to report the students involved to the Office of Student Conduct. No matter whether you share your own code or whether you copy somebody else's code, you'll be receiving a zero score if you're caught cheating. I hope all of you will work really hard to make sure this counter doesn't go up anymore for the rest of this semester. Let's talk about the rest of this semester. We are going to spend a week on the topic of web. It's a really interesting topic because internet is what is enabling me to deliver all of this lecture content to all of you. After that, we are going to spend a week on the topic of databases. Many of you will encounter a database as part of your future job. So this topic is going to come in really handy. Following that, we are going to spend four lectures on the topic of plotting, a really important topic for data science. When you want to convince someone that your analysis is correct, you always want to show them a meaningful plot. Finally, we'll be spending one lecture on the topic of randomness and then we'll wrap up CS220 for this semester. Let's get started with the topic of web. Let me quickly outline the learning objectives for today's lecture. We are first going to learn the terminology associated with computer networks in general and the internet. Following that, we are going to have a discussion on the topic of HTTP, which is a protocol that enables us to transfer content from one computer to another computer. Finally, we'll be going over a module called as request, which is going to enable us to download data sets from the internet. Let me get started by motivating why exactly we need to go through the topic of internet in a data science course. There are a ton of data sets available on the internet for you to download, process and analyze and try to find answers about specific questions associated with that particular data set. Let me give you three examples. The first example that I want to provide is the open payments data set. You might not know this, drug companies actually can provide incentives to doctors in order to sell their drug products. This is sort of like a quid pro quo. The good thing is that all of this transaction should be documented and should be made publicly available. Open payments data set enables you to access all of this publicly available information. If you download the open payments data set, you might be able to poke around and uh, find interesting information about the doctors and the drug companies that provide deals to those doctors. The next example that I want to provide is from Humanities. Project Gutenberg offers 57,000 books for you to download, process and analyze. The final example that I want to provide is city level data sets. A lot of cities in the US make a lot of information available publicly about their cities. The city of Madison passed an open data ordinance a few years back, which enables the city of Madison to release majority of their information in a public manner. The only data that they do not release has privacy based concerns. Let me give you a few examples of data that you can find on the city of Madison data set. You can find information about all trees that are being managed by the city of Madison. You can also find information about where exactly accidents happen within the city limits. You could also find information about who takes the bus and when they take the bus. 
downloading that information might uh, help us analyze uh, uh, how many people are taking the bus and what sort of bus routes that they are interested in and that might help us uh, coming come up with a better bus schedule in order to serve uh, people better and in a cost efficient manner so there is a ton of data set uh, out there in the internet for you to download process and analyze why not just stick to downloading the data sets manually like we have been doing for the cs220 projects let me give you a two fold motivation for that the first motivation that i want to provide is that sometimes there might be too much data involved and the data might be spread across multiple sources for example project gutenberg has 57000 books for you to download process and analyze imagine having to download every single book manually that's going to take you somewhere uh, in the order of few weeks if you have an automated way of downloading this uh, data set using python you might be able to finish the download process in a matter of few hours the second motivation that i want to provide here is that data doesn't always essentially come in the form of files let me give you an example for that open street map dataset is a really cool dataset which provides you a lot of information about uh, uh, roads railroads bike paths and things like that open street map doesn't really allow you to download the data in the form of files it rather provides an option for you to perform a remote procedure call rpc in short RPCs are just functions which run on a remote computer which you can call from your own computer just like you'll be making a function call within your python program you'll be making an RPC call within your python program which enables you to download the data from a remote computer open street map allows you to specify a rectangular area of interest by providing latitude and longitude ranges for your rectangles and then you can download specific uh, data within that particular rectangle for instance you can download uh, all the bike paths in the madison city limits if you provide the correct uh, latitude longitude for the rectangle let's learn about the basics of uh, computer networks in general so you want to be able to com- connect one computer to another computer so that's going to form the very basic computer network so from your computer you'll be sending a request to the remote computer for getting some data which is available as part of the remote computer your request need not always ask for data from the remote computer you can also upload data from your own laptop for example i'm recording this lecture and i want to upload my data on to the youtube platform so that all of you can watch this lecture so i'll be sending a request in order to upload data all of the request information that you are going to send from one computer to another will be in the form of binary representation once the remote computer receives a request it will be sending you a response which will include the data which you wanted to receive as part of your request and the data will also have a binary representation let me introduce to you the basic terminology of computer networks the computer which is sending the request is called as the client the remote computer which sends the response is called as the server so you might be using these terms to refer to the programs which are running within the computers as well for example client might refer to either the computer which sends the request or it can refer to the program within the computer that is trying to send that particular request similarly server can uh, refer to the remote computer or the program that is running within the remote computer the major challenge with the internet is that there are millions and com- millions of computers for you to connect so how exactly can you identify which specific machine that you want your request to be sent to that works very similar to how a postal system works whenever you want to send a post to one of your friends 
you can simply look up their mailing address and write that address down on an envelope then you can trust the postal service to get the letter safely to your friend you're not really going to worry about how the post gets sent from one city to another on its way to its final destination just like human beings have physical mailing addresses computers have what are called as ip addresses ip stands for internet protocol here is an example of an ip v4 address v4 stands for version 4 the other version of ip protocol is called as ipv6 once you know the ip address of the remote machine you should be able to send a request directly to that particular ip address here is a challenge though human beings absolutely hate remembering numbers imagine how hard it would be if you had to type an ip address every time you want to search something on google.com that would be terrible that is why we have what are called as domain names domain names are far easier to remember here is an example of a domain name every time you access the course website you are accessing my domain which is called as www.mshamkumar.com domain name servers dns in short enable you to look up a specific domain name and find the corresponding ip address for that particular domain name once you have the ip address you should be able to send a request to that particular ip address which represents the remote machine the next thing which i want to talk about is uh, let's say that you live in an apartment building multiple people who live in the same apartment building share the same street address correct how can you differentiate the actual address between two different apartments you have something which is called as apartment number just like you have apartment numbers in physical mailing addresses we have what are called as port numbers on computers every computer is capable of running multiple programs if you want to specifically mention which program in that computer that you want to send the request to then you have to explicitly mention what is called as a port number couple of examples of programs running on the client computer i have a google chrome which let's say is uh, enabling you to access google.com the second example is a python program similarly on the remote computer we might be able to run multiple programs including a couple of python programs i also have an example of nginx which is becoming a very famous web server program application the way that you'll mention port numbers is by adding additional port number after the ip address information here are a couple of examples of port numbers common port numbers include port 80 port 8080 port 443 5000 and so on let's say that uh, you want to send a request specifically to the nginx program on the remote server then you'll mention the ip address of the remote server and also port 80 the way for you to represent that is by using colon and then port number format after your ip address you don't often see port numbers whenever you type in something on your browser that's because the default values for port numbers are 80 and 443 you'll often be using the default port numbers let's talk about the request and response that is being sent between these two remote computers over here what exactly does a request contain and what exactly does a response contain it depends on specific application that you're trying to access on the remote computer for the purpose of cs220 we are only going to consider web applications which have simple request format and simple response format 
So we are going to talk about the hypertext transfer protocol next, which is uh, in short referred to as HTTP. HTTP enables us to transfer data between web applications. I'll wrap up this current video here. In the next video, I'll talk about how HTTP works.